Now let me talk about the metering modes. Metering modes, as you know, is different than focusing, and you can get to them by the function button, metering mode, and you have many different choices, five to be exact. Let me start with the most basic. This one takes us back in time to the 1950s, average. And uh, to help out, let me just uh, use this quick little light here, which impersonates difficult light. And when you have something really, really bright and really, really dark, an average camera will try to average everything together, bright lights, dark lights. If this is your subject, it's doing a very bad job exposing for it because it's trying to take everything into account. A little bit later in the 1950s, Nikon invented something called center weighted metering, which, believe it or not, appears in this camera. Uh, here it is, the metering mode. There it is, center weighted metering. Now, with center weighted metering, the idea is whatever is in the center of your image is going to count for more than whatever is in the corner. Let's try that again. As it moves from the corner to the center, it starts to count more when the camera is determining what the exposure, what it's going to meter for. Now, this is great if you're not a fan of the rule of thirds, but this is what it did. The Nikon F2AS worked for this for almost a decade. All Nikon metering was like this, and it made a pretty good decision in greater amounts of areas. Then somebody decided, well, how do we, how do we make this even better? And Nikon, once again, was the leader in the field. They came out with something called matrix metering, which Canon calls evaluative metering, which Sony calls multi-second metering. It all does the same thing, and it's so good that I actually keep it as my default metering mode. Here it is. It's the very first option. It's called multi-segment. Now, what multi-segment metering does is it breaks down the image into smaller components. Every camera has a different amount, but basically it has a little tiny database inside, and it recognizes a light distribution of a bad exposure. And it also has in the corner what to do to fix it. For example, in this graphic, there's a classic backlit person, and the camera is programmed to say if you see a light distribution that looks like this, it's probably a backlight person. Fix it by overexposing by one and a quarter stops, and you're done. Multi-second metering mode has a great track record. It's so good that I keep it on as uh, my default. And whenever the lighting gets really difficult where it makes bad guesses, then my instant go-to change is something called Spot AEL Toggle. And I actually assigned that to a button. Uh, let me show you how it was done. Camera 2, number 8, custom key shooting, AEL buttons on the right, there it is. And it's assigned to spot AEL toggle. The spot is a little icon next to the letters AEL. Here's what it means. First, let me talk about spot metering mode. And then I'll tell you about how this feature gets you to spot metering mode much quicker than using the function button. When you're in the function the metering mode, the third option is spot metering and you have two different sizes, large and standard. Let's put standard for right now. And when you choose it, you'll see a small circle appear in the center of your frame. The camera is using only the information in the center to determine its exposure. So if you put a white, put a white cardboard there, it'll get a little bit darker. If you put black cardboard there, it'll get a little bit brighter because it's trying to make things look 18% gray. If you have a really bright light up there, what will it do? It will only pay attention to the very, very center of the image and pay no attention whatsoever if the light is just outside that circle. So it's kind of like center weighted metering, but a lot more exacting. It's very useful if you're shooting people in the theater or rock concerts where you have guitar players that are very well lit by the spotlights, but very, very almost no lighting behind them at all. This will fool most camera exposure meters. And for decades, my go-to solution to difficult lighting like that was to assign a spot AEL toggle to my AEL button. My AEL button is right over there. And then when it came time to getting the difficult lighting, I would simply point my subject in the center of the image and say, camera, that's my subject. I want you to expose just for that. And there you go. And then I can focus, recompose, shoot, do whatever I need to do. And it will lock the exposure, as you can see, I, I, can, I can move things around. It'll lock the exposure until I hit the AEL button again. And then it goes back to averaging everything together. What do the other settings do? Well, there's one other one. It's called Highlight. And it works very similarly to the spot metering where you spot AEL toggle. Here's what it's doing. It's going over and evaluating the light in every corner of the image. And it's looking for the brightest part 
and it's assuming the brightest part is going to be its subject, so it's going to expose for that. No longer do you need to put the camera into spot metering mode and then hit the spot AEL toggle button. Sony has saved you a step. This is great for theater lighting. It will meter for the brightest part on your stage. Now again, theater lighting will almost always throw off all your camera meters. So this is a very, very handy mode for doing just that. All roads lead to Rome. Many of these features may seem similar to you. That's okay. Remember, just pick two and use those exclusively and don't try to get caught up on memorizing every single feature and what it does. And when you're out in the field, you don't want anything detracting you from the light and the composition and the creativity. You want the camera to be an extension of you. Figure out which tools work best for you, use just those, and you can safely ignore everything else.